welcome to Director of Finance Television. We're here at the London offices of Barnett Woodingham and we're going to talk a bit more about pensions. With me here, Simon Taylor and Nick Griggs. Welcome to you both. Nick, let's start with you and ask you about the headlines recently that we've seen about pension deficits for defined benefit pensions. How big a headache is this actually? I guess just in the current sort of low interest, low yield environment, pension deficits within DV schemes have, have just spiralled um, in the last last few years and as a result the trustees of those pension schemes are demanding ever a higher levels of contributions from the employers to try and clear those deficits. But how big a problem do you think it is? I, I think it's a very big problem. We've already seen some cases over the last year of companies who've not been able to pay dividends because of the size of the deficit in their pension scheme uh, and we do a survey every year of the of the UK's biggest pension schemes and that showed that in 2015, companies paid in over £8 billion into their pension schemes to make good the deficits. And that's £8 billion that, you know, most of that could probably be reinvested in the company for growth. And that's not been done because it's going to the pension scheme. So do you think it's a resolvable problem? Is it a cyclical problem, something that will, will, will iron out in time? Or does it need to be actively tackled? I would, yeah. We'd all be, be suggesting that companies should be actively looking to, to tackle this, this problem, trying to set a a long-term strategy to, to deal with this this problem. I guess for a number of years we've always we've been saying that yeah yields can't get any lower, but they continue to get get lower and deficits as a result are, are increasing it ever further. So what sort of things can companies do? Well I think in the in the past companies have viewed pension contributions as a sort of legacy compliance cost. The members of these pension schemes don't work for the companies anymore. So it's, it's just a cost relating to some previous employment. I think what we're seeing now is companies working out exactly what they want to do in the long term and with trustees asking for more money, they're seeing the money they pay in as not necessarily a legacy compliance cost anymore, but as a way of actually getting towards that long term target, of getting where they want to be in the long term. And I think for, for companies, it's all about trying to be proactive with that, looking for opportunities when they do arise, we're living in a very volatile world within financial markets so there are opportunities uh, that if you're set up in the right way you can capture. But of course it's true what Simon says that the money cannot be spent twice once it's been put in a pension because it's trying to make up a deficit you can't invest it in a company. Yes and I guess this is where we're, we're suggesting that if, if the finance director can plan ahead and rather than diverting the money straight into the pension scheme and as you say that money's there then under the control of the, the pension tr trustees can it be used in a smarter way that can help the company de-risk that pension scheme and reduce the deficit by even more? Simon, we know that the, the, the government has changed the rules in terms of mm -hmm. what you do with your pension pot when you retire. That's chiefly where the, the, the change has come. How does that affect the picture? Um, well, there's been a lot of change over the last few years. I mean, you know, that's not ideal because FDs and companies don't like changing legislation because it impinges on what they can plan for. But what we have seen, that the, the legislation that's come out in the last few years has, has, has given us some opportunities for DB pension schemes in terms of trying to get to that long-term position. Um, you know, that we've seen a big increase in members transferring out of defined benefit schemes to defined contribution schemes where they've got a lot more flexibility around how they take those benefits. And in general, somebody transferring out of a DB scheme, that scheme becomes smaller and less risky. So it's good news for the, for the company. And I guess that can be a, a win-win for both mm. the employer and the member because the employer gets rid of some of those liabilities at a cost that probably deems to be acceptable and also gives the member yeah, access to a, a more flexible way to, to take their pension benefits so both parties can benefit from that. Type. And th these changes are pretty fundamental aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it was a real game changer. I mean, you know, before 2015, there were you know several ways that you could try and de-risk a pension scheme. But actually, since 2015, this has become the, almost the main way of de-risking a pension scheme. You know, getting people, reminding them of their options at retirement, facilitating transfers. It's, it's going to be big business over the next 10 years. And does it, do you think, successfully put the the responsibility a little bit more into the hands of the person who is collecting and paying into that pension pot? such that they're aware, much more aware of the broader picture. Yes, the, yeah, the, the member needs to take more responsibility and uh, be a bit more proactive in the way that they, they manage those, those funds. It's not that guaranteed promise that you get under um, a defined benefit scheme, but yeah, the way that people will often want to spend their, their retirement savings uh, during their retirement um, can be more flexible under this regime and will 
um, yeah, would give them access to, to, to spend the money as, as, they, as they wish. So just give me a, a couple of guidance points as to how it is that you're advising your clients. I think the, the key thing is, is to sit down with the company and, and, and they may have thought they'd worked out a strategy before, but over the last few years, we've seen the game changer in 2015 with the pension flexibilities. We've seen yields get lower and lower. So strategies that they may have had before are probably now creaking a bit and, and probably need revisiting. So what we're doing is we're sitting down with companies and we're saying, okay, blank sheet of paper, what's your ideal outcome? Is it to run this scheme sustainably for the next 20, 30 years with sort of minimal effort? Or is it to try and get it off your balance sheet in as reasonable and cost effective time as possible? And it's working with the company to work out what that end game is and work out how to get there, allowing for all the competing uses of capital that that company's got. Because it's got to spend on the day job to, to, to grow and be able to support the scheme in the first place. So it's a big balancing act between all of that. And it's actually doing that in conjunction with the trustees, getting the trustees on board um, with their plans so that you've got one clear objective and both parties are, are working towards that single objective. What would you put on the must-do list then for 2017? So I think FDs need to sit down with a blank sheet of paper. They need to work out where they need to get to. They need to agree that with the trustees and they need to implement some quick wins over 2017. I think it's yeah. It's all about the FT being on the, on the front foot during 2017 to to make sure that they can implement the initiatives that they want to. Nick Griggs and Simon Taylor, thank you very much.